Today on the Best Noon Sports Show, period, we're wrapping up Big Ten Media Days. We're talking about Big 12 and Pac-12 going to battle and so much more. You don't want to miss out as we start right now. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Kevin Noon. It is Friday, July 29th, and we are live to tape. Did not want to go live this week. A uh, little little excuse here. I wrenched my back while I was at Big Ten Media Day, so I am playing injured. I would be listed as doubtful in uh, the availability report. I would give it my best go, but I just really can't move around that well. So... I just didn't want to sit at the chair for two hours doing a live show. So we're doing a short show. And that's the reason I've had people ask me why weren't there shows during Big Ten Media Days. I'll give you a bunch of excuses. I mean, ultimately, what it came down to is the Wi-Fi situation was not great, either at the at Lucas Oil or at the hotel. And it just didn't end up happening. So my apologies. We will try and get on to a better set schedule here next week if I can get into the chiropractor. But uh, Big Ten Media Days are in the books and what did we learn? Do we learn anything at these events? I mean, these coaches have known for so long how not to say anything to the media. They have all this time to build up to it. They don't say anything. And, you know, it kind of is what it is, and you just kind of roll with it. But, I mean, it is the inaugural. It's the start. It is the start of the countdown to the season. And Ohio State doesn't play with a zero weeks. Several other Big Ten schools do. Ohio State has to wait till September 3rd to take on Notre Dame. It was interesting. Uh, at Media Days, there was a correspondent from the LA Times there. So, you know, for the whole USC UCLA situation, as I adjust myself here in the chair with the heating pad, um, South Bend had a TV station there at least. I don't know if there was more, but I had a chance to talk with the South Bend reporter. Uh, they were there more of a matter of Ohio State Notre Dame opening week one, more so than expansion talk. Um, but, you know, getting to expansion talk, let's, you know, let's dive right into it. And Kevin Warren wasn't backing down from expansion talk. I mean, he wasn't willing to go out there and name names or anything, even though names kind of came out from some of some other national reporters who, you know, were talking to people or whatnot. And there's no real surprises in terms of the names. I mean, you still have, you know, Notre Dame at the top of the list, Stanford, Oregon, Washington, Florida State, Miami. I, I was surprised if we were going to put ACC schools on the list that we didn't see North Carolina. But then again, you have to wonder what happens with North Carolina. Does Do they have to carry Duke with them? Do they have to carry NC State? I mean, what goes on there? But then again, if we're talking about Stanford, we're not talking about Cal. And yes, Cal is part of the UC system. Stanford's private. So they're not, you know, there's no way that somebody in like legislation is going to say, well, you guys have to ride together. Um but then again, we saw Texas break away from Texas Tech. We saw Oklahoma break away from Oklahoma State. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting. But, you know, Kevin Warren did say, look, we're not looking to expand just for the sake of expansion. It has to make sense. And, 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 and that makes sense. I mean, and because you can't sit there and say, we're going to have these gigantic deals, these gigantic payouts, then dilute the pie. And it's like, okay, well, well 16 schools, you're going to get all this. But if we go to 20... And you're going to all get lesser numbers. I mean, what 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 are you expanding for at that point? And I understand that expansion isn't ex 100% about just what your TV rights deals are. There's a lot more to it. You've heard me talk about it on past shows. And I sometimes worry that I'm just giving you the same show over and over and over again. But the thing is, is the same stuff is topical week in and week out. And then we find ourselves here talking about it. But the Big Ten Academic Alliance is huge. You know, you're dealing with schools with huge endowments in terms of research dollars and everything else that's going on there. But, you know, we look at it from a football standpoint because that's kind of where we are. I'm not, you know, this isn't the best noon academic show period. I wasn't a great academic when I was in college. It wasn't that I wasn't able to do the work. It was I didn't care to do the work. I cared to drink beer. I cared to meet single ladies. I, you know, I was not, I was not, you know, your choice academic type. 
But, you know, we're talking sports here, and that, that's what it comes down to. I mean, and sure, you know, you bring Stanford in, and then you really just kind of take the the whole situation in terms of Olympic sports or non-revenue sports or whatever, however you want to classify them. I mean, Stanford wins the, uh, whatever it's called, the Learfield Cup, the Sears Cup. I don't even know what it's called anymore, but the all sports situation. I mean, Ohio State's done pretty well in certain years on it. I mean, Ohio State participates in so many sports. So you're, you, they've got a better opportunity than a lot of schools out there because they sponsor 36 sports or whatever. You know, one of the huge feathers in the cap of, of Gene Smith for maintaining that. I mean, Ohio State's always done a good job with that. But uh, I use that to dovetail into today. And it was Pac-12 media days. And let's let's rewind a couple few days ago when the Big 12 talked about being open for business and with their new commissioner, their rookie commissioner. And, you know, that was pretty much taken that they were looking at expanding and they had their sights set on several schools in the Pac-12. I believe it was like Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State. And then the uh, Pac-12 commissioner today here on Friday talks about, you know, about being open for business and he's not sure if they want to go shop there. So, I mean, it was something that was a bit of a departure of what we're used to seeing. Not very, uh, you know, alliance-like. And I know that the Big 12 was never part of this alliance that the Big 10 didn't take all that seriously between the ACC, the Pac-12, and the Big 10. But to see kind of that interplay there was interesting because you don't, generally get that and i and i don't know a whole lot about the pac-12 commissioner i know it's not larry scott anymore i know they went in and some they got somebody out of vegas with a huge marketing background i mean he seems to know his stuff uh, i was reading on social that you know one thing about this guy i know his name's george i don't know his last name or i kind of know but i don't want to butcher it and they said that you're going to what you see is what you get with him and he's going to say what's on his mind and he's not going to sit there and give you gobbledygook to use somebody else's word. And you certainly didn't get it. Now, of course, did you watch the Pac-12 uh, media day? I didn't because I'm part of America. I don't get Pac-12 network. So I didn't have a chance. And I just, I didn't really feel like getting online to go find it. And you know, I'm, I guess if I'm doing, if I'm doing kind of a national show, I should do a better job of that. So that's on me. I'll take that. But I'm injured. I'm injured. So I have an excuse. Um, but you know what are what are what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I know that I certain I like to see that. I like to see two conferences that are going to be going at it. You know, let them worry about each other, and then if the Big Ten really wants to go in and get Oregon and Washington, then it can. If it wants to go and get Stanford, it can. The Stanford, I believe, is the AD came out and said that we've not had formal overtures from anybody, which is perfectly makes sense. It's like when a when a coach is like, I haven't spoken to the Cleveland Browns. No, he hasn't spoken to the Cleveland Browns. His representatives have spoken to the Cleveland Browns. And it's been, you know, and there's maybe the Cleveland Browns as representatives. I mean, there's, 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 it can absolutely be true and false at the same time. It can be true that, you know, so and so has not spoken to so and so, but they could have their minions talking to the other minions. And, you know, you get your people and I'll get my people and we'll get together and do lunch. Uh, so, you know, I didn't take anything from that of being like, well, that's not. You know, that that's not that's not copacetic with everything else that I've heard. Uh, so, you know, and, and what are they going to come out and say? Oh, we've been talking to the Big Ten. You know, they're there's they're spouting all this transparency, all this transparency on the conference level in the Pac-12. Everybody's aware of what everybody's doing. There's no sneaking, sneaking around, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fine. That's fine. But at the end of the day, you've got to be in this for yourself. You're you're you are. You are part of your university that you work for. You're not part of the conference. You're not, you, the conference is not your boss. The conference is not paying you. You're getting paid by Stanford. You're getting paid by Washington. You're getting paid by Oregon. You're not getting paid by the Pac-12 office. And, oh, you can make the argument, well, some of the monies that go in, what does, you know, what does that get used for? Well, that's, no, that's, that, that doesn't hold any water with me. That doesn't make any sense because, you know, you, you're not there being a conference representative, you're there being a school representative. But I digress. My prediction on conference realignment, I don't, I mean, I don't, I think, I don't think there's anybody out there who believes that we're done. I don't, I mean, I think that the debate is when. Do we see something by October? 
Do we see something by the end of 23? Do we see something at the end of 24? If the Big Ten goes from 16 to 18 or 20 or 22 or 24, does it have to do it all at once? I mean, obviously, you have to have some things in place to redo your rights deals and make sure that you're maximizing your dollar figures. But it isn't something, I mean, I don't think you go school by school. I don't think you go from 16 to 17 to 18. That's, I think you got to bring schools in in pairs, whether that's a pair or a pair of pairs, if you bring in two or four or a pair of pair, a pair of pairs. I mean, you, you've got you've to sit there and, and, and make sense with that. But I, I think it's a situation of if the Big Ten say, let's just say Notre Dame gets on board and it's Notre Dame and Stanford and they get to 18. That doesn't mean that they're done. I mean, I mean, they could do it all in one fell swoop. They could do it in stages. So I'll be interested to see what happens there, but let's get back to big 10 media days. I got off onto a 10 minute diatribe about expansion because honestly, that's the thing I find most exciting right now. And even with the start of the season, so close, so close, we still have a month plus. I mean, not to zero week, but to week one when the rest of the country starts playing. Jackson Smith and Jigbo was, I spent an hour with his whole session. I, you know, save about 10 minutes when I walked over to Ronnie Hickman, but 50 of 60 minutes. He was really loose. He was really good. A range of questions and topics. You know, I'll try and get some more stuff put up on social at some point of talking about, you know, when his brother made his debut with the Pirates, you know, his thoughts on the Blitnikoff and not being a finalist last year and who he would have voted for his thoughts on Cam Babb, which I can kind of share that, you know, just how important he is and that he's healthy now and he should be ready to go this year. I mean, you know, I think we've heard that before. I mean, just a hard luck kid in terms of just his, his health and how his body has been able to hold up. But I asked him, I said, you know, are you willing to give up some balls thrown your way so he can eat? And he's like, absolutely. I'm all for it. Uh, and and CJ Stroud kind of echoed something. He was asked a similar question. I didn't hear it. I read it on social. But you know, Cam Babb, I think is is your is going to be your Blocko jersey guy. I really do. And I hope that it's a Blocko jersey that gets to be on the field. Because remember, last year was Thayer Munford as a lineman. You can't wear zero and as an offensive lineman. It's just not you know a number that works. So he could only wear it in certain instances in terms of warmups and senior day and things like that. And then the zero would come off and the seventy five would go on. Not that. Not that 75 is not a number steeped in its own history. One of the greatest players I've ever seen at any level wore 75. Let's let's not forget. But if they're gonna if they're gonna do this block O, let's do this block O right. And I think that if you're gonna do this block O right, it's gotta be a player that's gonna play. And you can't control that. You can't, I mean, you can control playing time, but you can't control injuries. So I'm really rooting for Cam Bab that he's able to get out there and get healthy. As I'm kind of jumping around in thoughts, I want to I want to send my condolences to the White family. Uh, William White, former Ohio State defensive back, former Detroit Lion, he passed away from his battle with ALS. Very sad. Remember, his son Brendan White played at Ohio State before transferring out. Uh, you know, we had the chance to meet William on a couple of instances. I mean, he was always a great guy. I mean, even though he was afflicted with such a you know a a, a, a terrible lot in terms of ALS. I mean, he was always upbeat. I mean, I don't know how he was able to do it. I mean, obviously, you know, some people just have a strength that other people don't possess. And, you know, he had that strength and he will be missed. And, you know, I want to send my condolences out to his friends and family and everybody in Buckeye Nation. We lost William White way too young. But I certainly, you know, don't want to end the show on, you know, on a, on a somber note. So, I'm trying to think of anything else that's going on. You know, one one other fun story as we make this kind of a quick show. Uh, you know, obviously, athletes are going to athlete and they're going to want to play any sport that they can. And the football players certainly like to get out there and shoot the basketball around and play horse. And Jackson Smith and Jigbo is quick to point out that he just seems to have C.J. Stroud's number, much to C.J. Stroud's chagrin. And he seems to disagree with what the record is. But then the comment came out from Stroud that he believed that if they got the best basketball playing football players out there to go against the Ohio state basketball team, that they could win. He wasn't guaranteeing a win. He wasn't saying that we're going to win six out of eight or anything like that, but that they could win. What are your thoughts on that one? I mean, I, I read, I think it was Eugene Brown, the third, he kind of had a couple of weird emojis in terms of his thoughts when he was retweeting somebody who had that on there. 
you know, I think it's all in good fun. And I think that, you know, you got athletes who are at the top of the game in football who believe that they can accomplish anything and they really can accomplish a lot, but I don't know if they're going to be able to go out there and be able to beat a basketball team. I mean, guys that have come up their whole lives playing basketball, getting coached at the college level in basketball, who, you know, that is the, you know, that is that and academics are their sole focuses. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it, I think it's fun. I would, I would, they put that on pay-per-view if that were some sort of NIL deal and they put that on pay for pay-per-view, if I weren't there covering it. I'd be watching it. I would, I would, I would love to see Dewan Jones and, and some of these guys, Jack Sawyer and JT Tuomoloau and guys that were fantastic basketball players in the prep ranks go out there and play. I think they would get, you know, shut down. I will say this. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't know what Ohio state has because it's such a young and transfer heavy team. I mean, really very few pieces that are coming back from last year's team. Zed Key, Eugene Brown, are the two that come off the top of my mind is guys who played. Kalen Etzler, he uh, redshirted last year, so he didn't get to play. I mean, you got a five-man uh, recruiting class. You've got transfers. I mean, Justice Suing didn't play. Uh, Seth Towns didn't play because of injuries. So, I mean, I guess Suing played like, a little like before he was shut down with a, with his abdominal injury. But, you know, I, I, I find it fun and good nature just as long as it doesn't become larger than what it was kind of a throwaway comment of big 10 media days. But I, again, I wanted to kind of end on a fun note, quick show today, uh, you know, playing injured, as I said, but we will hopefully be healthy next week. Uh, we'll go a couple times next week, hopefully have some news in terms of the, the recruiting front, uh, Ohio state, could get some good news with quarterback Brock Glenn on Saturday on the uh, the 30th at about 4 p.m. Eastern. He's supposed to make his announcement. Going into yesterday, I thought the Ohio State would be another hat on the table. Now it sounds like Ohio State may be the team. So, you know, keep it locked in. We'll find out. See if we have any other news to report next week as well. But until then, I'm your host, Kevin Noon. Be sure to like this channel. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. And we will talk to you very, very soon.